الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد حج and عمرة the lesser pilgrimage are very very important and unique acts of worship and they are an expression of Tawheed an expression of the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah and that this is a way in which we express that great uh, the, the great aspect of, of Tawheed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is by worshipping Him and Him alone and worshipping Him and Him alone on the Umrah and the Hajj performing the pilgrimage because we perform that great act of worship with, with intention intention to worship Allah intention to please Allah intention to fulfill what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed for us and along with that is that when we perform those acts of worship we should do it in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam we also know that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had the best of manners the best of etiquettes and was patient so the one who performs these great acts should be patient during the performance of the pilgrimage the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said مَنْ حَجَّ لِلَّهِ فَلَمْ يُرْفُضْ وَلَمْ يُفْسُقْ رَجَعَ كَيَوْمْ وَلَدْتُهُ أُمَّهُ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said as was narrated in Bukhari and Muslim and Nisai wa Ibn Majah wa Tirmidhi He said whoever performed hajj and neither spoke indecently nor acted wickedly would return free from sin as on the day his mother bore him. So doing this great act of worship strictly for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the Prophet sallallahu said in the hadith من حج لله He said whoever perform hajj for the sake of Allah and did not speak ill you know did not speak indecent no foul language because we're tested during that great struggle during the great pilgrimage that you'll find people doing all kinds you'll see people doing acts that are outside of Islam that have no relationship with Islam and people treating you uh, indecently people who are striving to do an act of worship but they have shortcomings because maybe they abuse their brothers and sisters in order to perform their act of worship so it requires patience this is why the Prophet ﷺ said whoever performs this for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and neither spoke indecently nor acted wickedly so also you should be on your best conduct then what's the result? would return free from sin as the day they were born into this world so if we want that that great forgiveness from our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala then we should observe the rites of the pilgrimage based on knowledge based on proper conduct in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said مَنْ يُرَدُ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرًا يَفَقَهُ فِي الدِّينِ that whenever Allah wants good for a person He gives him understanding of the religion when you seek the knowledge about the act of worship you're going to do regardless of whether that's prayer regardless of whether you're paying the zakat regardless of whether you're making the umrah or the hajj or you're fasting but when you take time out to learn about that religion then you're falling under that hadith that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants good for you and the way in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what's good for you is that he gives you understanding of the religion so when you have that light that nur and that ilm that knowledge and that basira that insight and that fit that understanding you gain more knowledge about your religion and you gain something from amongst those attributes this shows that Allah wants good for you so I ask Allah the Almighty to accept 
all of our good and forgive all of our evil and bless us all with ilm nafiyah wa rizqan tayyibah wa amalan muttaqabbinan wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam